What's going on, Pep? Hey, guys. Good morning. What is up? Yeah, the uh, NBA playoffs, if you're a Clippers fan, okay, here's here's the good news, bad news. The bad news is they lost, right? They lost that play-in yeah. first game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. But the good news is because they are the eighth seed, they get another chance to get into the playoffs. So the Clippers will now play the Pelicans. The Pelicans beating San Antonio last night. So the Clippers and the Pelicans will play on Friday night. The winner actually gets into the playoffs. But here's the bad news. The winner will get, well, the top-seeded Phoenix Suns in the first round Ooh. of the playoffs. So... The Clippers, hey, you might get into the playoffs. The bad news is you might run into the, the best team in basketball. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah, we saw Patrick Beverly was thrilled to get past his uh, previous Clippers team, was just absolutely dunking all over them after the game. And now Clippers' last chance. Like, yeah, they could get hot in this game. But like you said, even if they do get hot in this game, is it going to matter? Because then you've got the buzz on that is the Suns waiting for them in the wings. Yeah, they're a tough team. You know, I kind of compared a little bit to if you're a local high school football fan. You know, if, if you make it, you know, squeeze into the Division One playoffs, it's like, great, celebrate, you made the playoffs. But now you got to go play Centennial or Modern Day or St. John Bosco, and it's it's no, no fun. So that's, that's what the Clippers are looking at. Hey, you might make it into the playoffs, and that's great. You know, they've had tons of injuries. Kawhi hasn't even played this year, but your consolation prize is the Phoenix Suns. And then the other side of that story, too, is obviously the big hype is Zion Williamson because he did a big 360 dunk. So everyone assumed he was coming back for the series. Reportedly, I guess he is not coming back yet. That's what the story is. Yeah, there was the one dunk where he like threw out the backboard and dunk, but there was some weird visual stuff going on with that, too, where they're thinking that might have been a little doctored up. So <laughs> there's, there's weird stuff going on with Zion right And now. then he just did a huge 360 dunk in warm-ups in front of all the crowds. So right. That made the crowd go all crazy. And I heard he's, he's doing five on five and stuff like that, but they're not quite ready to let him play. I, it, the whole Zion thing is weird. It's uh, afraid of injury. We will talk about that later. It's uh, it's always been weird. Remember when he was at Duke, he actually blew out his shoe in a game. Like he actually, his foot came through the shoe. Like nobody does that, right? <laughs> but he did. Like he's always had like weird things going on. He is a freak physically. But <laughs> no, he yeah, is. He is. If he's, health, if, if he's healthy, man, he is a problem. He is a, a matchup nightmare for another team. But, again, if he's healthy, it's kind of like the Lakers saying if Anthony Davis was healthy all the time. You know, he's one of the best players in basketball. But uh, I, I kind of like the Clippers in this matchup against the Pelicans. I think the Clippers might actually win. The problem is, again, then you run into Phoenix and your season's probably going to be over. Right. No shoe. I felt that kind of torque before. No, man. No. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a big dude. He's a big, big dude. Uh, let's transition to the NFL. And this was big, big news for the Raiders. And I think we kind of all saw this coming, uh, that Derek Carr locked up for another three years, $121 million. So they, the Raiders will actually have their quarterback through the 2025 season. And guys, if, if you look back a couple weeks, when the Raiders got Devontae Adams, yeah, they went and got him because he is the best receiver in the NFL. I get that. But he's also... Derek Carr's homie, man. These guys played at Fresno State. They're still tight. They're very good friends. So when they went and got Devontae Adams, in the back of my mind, I thought, okay, that means they're going all in on Derek Carr as well because they're getting his guy. They're going to give him a, you know, the number one receiver and the game and his homie. Man, I have to admit that I am not a Raiders fan, but I am a total victim of hard knocks. Ever since I saw Derek Carr in hard knocks, it's made me like him. So I'm happy as hell for him. I mean, the one thing I've kind of heard about the contract is this might be sort of a last, this is your last chance, Derek. We're giving you this because it's like a one year, I think 24 million. And then after that, the team has an option on whether or not they continue on with it or not. So it's kind of like, look, we're going to get you a weapon. We're going to get you this contract. This is your last chance. If you don't do it, I see Derek Carr out the door this year if he's not doing it. Yeah, the Raiders should be loaded, at least offensively. They should be loaded. They got a great young running back. They've got a great young tight end. Now they got Devontae Adams. Like, they should have no problem scoring points, which will be tough, even tougher now in the AFC West, now that Russell Wilson has joined the Denver Broncos. Uh, I think it was, it was it last year, I think we were talking about the NFC West maybe had four playoff teams in that division. I feel like the AFC West now, this upcoming season, has potentially four playoff caliber teams. Like, I feel like all four of those teams could win the division or at least get to the playoffs. Pretty decent teams, at least. And that's, I mean, they are in the AFC, so getting better. Like, they might have gotten better, but have they gotten so much better that they're going to improve themselves in that tough AFC? And then we also know that 
as the year goes, they're going to have to survive Vegas, which seems to be hard enough <laughs> right now anyway. Yeah. Well, that's that's home field advantage, right? Hopefully, the Raiders get used to playing in Las Vegas each and every week, and you know, and, and it the hurt team. Them more last year than it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we it was we will not f- a very good home field for them last year. <laughs> no. But at least on paper, we always say like, oh, on paper they look really good. They got a great roster. So I'm excited what the Raiders are going to look like this season. But the AFC West is going to be absolutely brutal. The best division in football, I would say, at least. Um, this, oh, yeah. for this upcoming season. And guys, let's transition to baseball. The Dodgers picking up a big win against the Twins yesterday, but the real story was the return of Clayton Kershaw, right? He signed a one-year deal in the offseason for the Dodgers to bring him back because a lot of us thought, you know, is Kershaw going to stay healthy? How much does he have left in the tank? Well, his first game of the season, his season debut against the Twins, how about seven perfect innings and 13 strikeouts against a good Twins team? I felt like I got kicked in the gut when they pulled him out of the game, especially because, you know, I know after the sixth inning, he tends to fall apart, especially the last five years. But it appeared to me like he was cruising. And I have, you know, got the same old theory of never mess with the streak. He's going, I mean, don't talk to him. Don't look at him. Let him do whatever he wants. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless he wanted to come out of the game, you got to leave him in there and see what happens. Perfect games. They don't happen. You know what I mean? There's only been 23 of them in how many games? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was the big argument, right? You know, after after that game, you had a, a bunch of, you know, people falling on one side of the fence saying, hey, man, what is Dave Roberts doing? Leave him in there of the chance to go all nine innings and get the complete game, perfect game. Leave him in there. Let's see if he can do it. And the other side of baseball saying, well, you know, it was the right decision. It's early on in the season. You got to save his arm, keep him healthy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, that's must-see TV. If he's going for the perfect game, I'm watching. If they pull him out, I'm like, okay, the Dodgers are going to win. I'll whatever. 40, I I get it. They had a pitch count, but when a perfect game is going on, you'd think you throw that out the window. I say anybody who's claiming pitch count, claiming, oh, yeah, the rest of the season, you are what is wrong with baseball <laughs> and the exact reason why I hate that stupid sport. You had a chance to do something – in over 100 years that only 23 people have ever done, let the man throw until he throws a bad ball, then pull his ass out of the game. They either pulled him out too early because they knew that he didn't have it, and then the thing that I hate afterwards is him coming to the team's defense and saying, like, no, I didn't really have it, and that makes him look like the biggest puss ever. He says, hey, we're here to win and all that stuff, and watch if he hurts himself in the next game. Let's say, I mean, God forbid, if he blows out his arm in this next game, we're never going to hear the end of it. Yeah, you know, and, and, and Forty, you're right. He, you know, he backed Dave Roberts and the team. You know, Kershaw's a company Bad guy, luck. right? He's a company Bad guy. Luck. He said, yeah, you know what? Manager's right. Dave Roberts right. He he knows what he's doing. Oh. You know, he knows what's best for, you know, the big picture, the long run, and my health. Yeah, you know, totally agree with what he did. But come on, in the back of his mind, he's probably thinking, dude, leave me out on the mound. Let me see if I can bring this home. Like, and you know, he seven perfect innings is I unbelievable. The coach do. I, I don't have it in me. The coach knows I don't have it in me. I don't have it, guys. I'm not that guy. Like, that's what he's saying. See, even, the Bad dog's luck. Upset. even the dog is upset. The, I'm just saying, even a no-hitter, I wouldn't have been as upset. Even I probably would feel like he should leave him out there for the no-hitter. But the perfect game is a really upper, upper echelon thing that doesn't happen. No, and, and, and that's the thing. You know, like, we don't see it very often. And for a guy to be so dominant through seven innings – Give him a chance, you know, give it for, you know, in baseball in general, baseball wants something like this. Give it a chance to see it all the way through. I mean, Kim Jong-il did not stop playing golf after he got that 15th hole in one. He finished the round out. And then he invented the burrito. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and that was just on yeah, a Tuesday. Out. Exactly. <laughs> That's a Tuesday for him. Yeah. Tell them how to get your stuff. Hey, you can check us out on Inland Sports. Talk about our local guy like Austin Barnes of the Dodgers. Hit home run number two on the season, man. Bringing the power at the plate this season. So check it out on Inland Sports, all over social media, and the Inland Sports YouTube channel. God, that's Riverside Power. Thanks, Pat.